Hello, sunshine. Welcome to CNN 10. I'm Coy Wire. It's Thursday, April 10th. Happy Friday Eve. And happy National Siblings Day. If you're in the U.S. or Canada, let your brother or sister know you love them today, no matter how annoying they might be sometimes. Random Thought Thursday. Why don't we call the toothbrush a teeth brush? And why do doctors call what they do practice? Shouldn't they be pretty darn good at what they do by now? All right, we've got lots of news to get to and only 10 minutes to do it. So let's get to it. We begin today with an update on the sweeping tariffs that President Trump's administration has placed on trading partners around the world. As a reminder, tariffs are simply a tax placed on goods from other countries. They've been around for centuries and are often used to protect domestic industries and to generate revenue. Now, after last week's announcement, President Trump says he is ordering a 90-day pause on all reciprocal tariffs. The exception is China, who will actually see tariffs increased to 125%. These were announced in response to Chinese leaders declaring 84% retaliatory tariffs on U.S. goods. U.S. Treasury Secretary Scott Besant said Trump's decision to pause these tariffs rewarded nations who chose not to retaliate amid a brewing trade war and will allow time to negotiate new trade agreements. But the economic uncertainty resulting from the tariff back and forth are causing ripple effects on the wider global economy with some investors predicting a bear market which is a period where a major stock index like the Nasdaq or Dow Jones falls 20% or more from a recent high. We've asked our Matt Egan to walk us through what happens during a bear market and explain how they've played out historically on Wall Street. Markets are melting down and everyone is talking about a bear market. The Nasdaq is in a bear market. Now nearing a bear market. On pace for a bear market. But what exactly is it? A bear market is a 20% drop from a recent high. These steep market declines typically signal immense fear among investors about the health of the economy. Since 1929, there have been 18 bear markets for the S&P 500. The average drop, about 37%. Some bear markets were less severe, some more. Some of them, like in 1990, were caused by war. Others were fueled by the bursting of asset bubbles, like in 2000. The internet mania was a giant bubble. Toxic mortgages were to blame for the 2008 meltdown. A breathtaking plunge for stock markets. The Dow drops by 800 points. And a deadly virus crashed markets in 2020. This time, it's self-inflicted. President Trump's trade war has freaked out investors around the world, causing enormous losses in rapid fashion. For now, investors are selling first and they're asking questions later. We go now to Britain's second largest city, Birmingham, which is facing a growing mess of a problem which includes rats as big as cats. That's what some residents are saying. Mountains of garbage bags, they're piling up on the streets of Birmingham as garbage collectors are on strike over a pay dispute with the city council. CNN's Anna Kubin went out to find out more about what has become this growing health problem because of rotting garbage and rat infestations. Birmingham is Britain's second biggest city, home to over a million people. It was an engine of the country's industrial revolution during the 17 and 1800s. And you may know it as the setting of that little BBC series, Peaky Blinders. Right now, it's in the news for something else. Trash. Mountains upon mountains of garbage bags are piling up outside people's homes and businesses because garbage collectors are on strike. The strike is over changes the city government wants to make to garbage workers' pay, and there is no end in sight. In some parts of the city, people haven't had their garbage collected in weeks, and that's posing a health hazard. Because with trash comes rats. Will Timms has been a pest controller here for 12 years and says he's never seen anything quite like this before. My calls are going up 50% with rodents. What kind of problems are people calling you up about? Rats gaining access to cars. Uh, gaining access to the kitchens, air vents, getting underneath the beds. I've had people crying down the phone saying, I've got a rat, can you come out now? I caught one last week and it was over 22 inches in length, tip to tail, and it wasn't fully grown. Look at this. So you can smell it. Look where it is. It oh, right it. by a pharmacy. Right by a pharmacy, and there's a school there. How does it make you feel that all of the attention on Birmingham right now is about the bin strike? Birmingham's always in the news for something bad at the moment, and it just really isn't like that. Pop quiz, hot shot. A NASA engineer is credited with inventing what popular toy? Slinky, Silly Putty, Super Soaker, or Game Boy?
If you said super soaker, you are super smart. Former NASA scientist Dr. Lonnie Johnson was working on a new idea for a heat pump. He was inspired by a shooting jet of water leading to the invention of that popular summer toy. Now to news out of Washington, D.C., where an unconventional pick to be the head of NASA faced questions from members of a Senate committee. President Trump nominated a billionaire CEO named Jared Isaacman to head the space agency. He's actually been to space twice, paying to go aboard private SpaceX capsules, including the world's first all-civilian extended space flight. During the hearing, Isaacman faced wide-ranging questions about how NASA's priorities might change under his leadership. And Isaacman was specifically asked how he would handle NASA's mission to focus on the moon versus interest in exploring Mars. We don't have to make a, a binary decision of moon versus Mars, or moon has to come first versus Mars. I think we could be paralleling these efforts and doing the near impossible, which is exactly why the American uh, taxpayers funded NASA in the first place. NASA's current Artemis program aims to return astronauts to the lunar surface and eventually create a permanent human settlement on the moon. Our Jackie Waddles has more about Isaac Min and what his nomination could mean for the future of space travel. Welcome everybody to Crew Dragon Resilience. This tech billionaire could be the next head of NASA. Jared Isaacman, the CEO of tech payment company Shift4, has commanded and funded two private missions to space through SpaceX. He's an unorthodox pick for an agency that is typically led by scientists, engineers, academics, or public servants. So what does the choice say about where the agency may head under Trump? Here are some possibilities. The first big question, will NASA prioritize the moon or Mars? A lot of NASA's focus since Trump's first administration has been on the Artemis moon program, whose goals are to return astronauts to the lunar surface for the first time in more than 50 years. The program has faced several setbacks and delays. And now this Trump administration, which has seen substantial new support from SpaceX CEO Elon Musk, may have its sights set elsewhere. We will pursue our manifest destiny into the stars, launching American astronauts to plant the stars and stripes on the planet Mars. Mars has been a long time focus of Musk, and Isaacman is his close ally. Some may say too close. His company, Shift4 Payments, invested almost $30 million in SpaceX a few years ago. So will more NASA resources shift to SpaceX, and by extension, toward a Mars mission? NASA already relies heavily on commercial partnerships. For example, the agency invests in both SpaceX and Jeff Bezos' company, Blue Origin, to develop develop human lunar landers, something Isaacman has criticized as a waste of money. Some of that funding, he says, could be put towards other scientific programs, perhaps NASA's efforts to return a rock sample from Mars that may reveal if life existed there, an observatory to hunt for habitable worlds, or other space-based telescopes. A lot remains unknown as 2025 kicks off with new leadership, and what direction the U.S. takes could have a major impact on this modern space race. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10. Three prehistoric dire wolves brought back from extinction? Dallas-based company Colossal Biosciences revealed they created a hybrid species of wolf that died out thousands of years ago. How old, you might ask? Well, the company says it took DNA from a 13,000-year-old dire wolf tooth and a 72,000-year-old skull, then cloned and altered the genes of a gray wolf, the dire wolf's closest living relative. That's a lot to unpack. The three pups are a hybrid species that appear to be similar to the extinct wolf. The company says two male dire wolf pups were born last October and a female pup was born this January. That's doggone awesome and pretty cute. Colossal has also been working toward resurrecting other extinct species like the mammoth, the dodo, and the Tasmanian tiger. Not sure how I feel about all this if Jurassic and me. What say you? All right, it's time now for the best part of the show, you. This shout out goes to... Sam Barlow High School. I hear those Bruins up there have a good thing brewing in Gresham, Oregon. Rise up. And to Mr. Sides and all of our friends at Harrington Middle School in Mount Laurel, New Jersey, thank you for making us part of your day. I see you, Gia. Make it an awesome one, everyone. Get your minds right and shine bright. I'm Coy Wire. We'll see you right back here tomorrow on CNN 10.